let's talk about direction derivatives and gradients in section 14.5 and this chapter is a little bit there's a little bit of theory involved which i might just talk a little bit about here at the beginning but uh 14.5 gradients coming into this video you should know how to calculate gradient already that's what i'm going to assume and let's just talk about one problem then which is 14.5.29 and the the problem is this so you have f is equal to or f of x y x comma y is equal to x squared minus x y plus y squared minus y and okay so the question then says uh find the directions u and values of d u f at one comma negative one for which right and part a asks d u f at one comma negative one is the largest okay so before we dive into this problem um what do we have so what is d u f at one comma one right so d u f is the directional derivative All right, and essentially it means this, right? Uh, directional derivation, directional derivative. Okay, um, and you should know the definition. It's the gradient of f dotted with a vector u, right? And so, so what's the difference between a gradient and a directional derivative? A gradient is by itself just a vector, right? So the gradient of f, or in our case, since we need to find this anyways, what is the gradient of f? Well, since f is a function of two variables, uh, this part is going to be f partial x, and the second part is going to be f partial y. And in our case, we get 2x minus y, and then here we get 2y uh, minus x minus 1. Okay. And what then what is a directional derivative? Well, the directional derivative just means I have a gradient, all right, that's pointing in some certain direction, right? Because this is since this gradient's a vector, and I want to see then what the ch what the functional change will be, right? Because I have a function f of x y, I want to see what the functional change will be like if I go in a certain direction u. Okay, so u, uh, for the most part, or or in some cases, will just be given to you, and in that case, it'll just be like find the directional derivative of f in the, the direction, let's say, uh, 3 comma 2, right? So that means you want to find uh, how much the function f is changing in, term, in the direction of uh, 3 comma 2, uh, which is a vector in itself, okay? And in other cases, like this crate, in, in this case right here, I want to find, essentially, my function is being evaluated at one comma negative one, right? And I want to see which direction do I go makes my function value increase the largest. That's what d u f at one negative one being the largest means, okay? So the directional derivative tells you the rate of change of a function going in the direction of u. And in part A, I need to find which direction u is going to be the 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 direction that gets me the largest directional derivative okay and how do i do that well this is the theory part the theory part says that before we get there we're going to evaluate this then at one comma negative one all right and that gets me uh three and then negative two minus one negative four okay so i'm at the point three negative four or or i'm not at the point three negative four but the gradient is three negative four and what does the theory say? The theory says that dfu, d, duf, the directional derivative of f is the largest when u is equal to gradient f over the magnitude of gradient f. Okay, so what that means is that my directional derivative will be the largest when u is in the same direction as my gradient okay and so in this case then u should equal 
gray, uh, uh, or grading f over the magnitude of grading f, which then becomes uh, three fifths comma negative four fifths. Okay. And why is that true? Well, if you think about it, right, what is df dot e? What is the gradient of f? dotted with u, right? Because the directional derivative is the gradient f dotted with u. Well, remember from way back in chapter 12.3 now, this was equal to the magnitude of f times the magnitude of u times cosine theta, right? So if I have a gradient vector and I have a u, right? I want to find the dot product between the two. Well, this dot product is going to be the greatest, right? Provided that u has a fixed length, if cosine theta is equal to one, right? And when is cosine theta equal to one? Well, it's equal to one when theta is equal to zero, which means that this angle here is zero, which means that u would actually be then just pointing in the same direction as uh, gradient of f, right? Or this is del f or nabla f. That's what the tr upside down triangle is called. So I'll probably say del f, that's what I'm referring to, right? So part A, is the fact that then u is going to be in the direction <coughs> of the gradient and that's going to be three-fifths, four-fifths. And uh, when we're trying to find the direction, directions are always unit vectors, right? And I think I've mentioned this before, uh, maybe in passing, but directional vectors are going to be unit vectors and that's why um, u is a unit vector here. All right, part b then is going to be which direction u is du of f at one negative one, the smallest. Okay. And when is that true? Well, then del f, right? Del f at one comma one or, or one comma negative one is still equal to uh, three negative four, right? And now I want to find the direction u such that del f dot u is going to be the smallest. So u such that del f dot u is the smallest it can possibly be, right? And remember, u is going to be a unit vector because it's a, dir uh, it's a direction, okay? And what, 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 what is this answer? Well, this answer then is going to be, if we look back up here, when is this guy going to be the smallest, right? Well, this is always positive. This is always positive, right? Magnitudes are always positive, but cosine theta can change. And what's the smallest cosine theta will be? It will be negative one, right? So when we have the case, when I have a directional derivative, del f, and I have u such that the cosine between the angle is negative one, well, then this angle has to be pi, right? And so u is going to be pointed in the complete opposite direction of the directional derivative. And so in this case, u will be equal to negative del f over the magnitude of del f and so that will be negative three-fifths comma negative four-fifths or positive four-fifths okay so that's the direction of the uh, least rate of change or the this is the direction of the least increase so du of f being the smallest is when the fat function is increasing the least or it is the direction when the function is decreasing the fastest, okay? So let's wrap our mind heads around that for a quick second, right? du of f being the largest means that the function is increasing, increasing the fastest, right? And du of f being the smallest, it means which direction is u such that function is decreasing the fastest, okay? And you'll see this kind of wording a lot in problems it was like find the direction when the function's increasing the fastest or find the function when the function uh, find the direction when the function's decreasing the fastest okay and now what do we got we've got part c uh i need to find a direction u such that duf um at one comma negative one is equal to zero so again du uh, or then gradient of f uh, evaluated at one comma negative one was three negative four and so essentially I need to find a direction u such that this dot x comma y is equal to zero, right? And this will be u. So I need to find this u. And what do I got? Well, essentially you can just plug things in and try them out and see if it works. 
And so one thing that works then is if x equals 4 and y equals 3, right, because then I get 12 minus 12 is 0. And so I can let u equal 4, uh, 4 comma 3. But since I want unit vectors, then u is going to equal 4 fifths comma 3 fifths. Okay. And this just means that if I go in the direction of this vector u at the point 1 comma negative 1, my function isn't going to change. Um, and, and that's what a directional derivative is. Okay. And let's see, uh, what else? <laughs> All right. What if my question asked, so I'm not going to do the last two parts because you guys can do those on yourself. D and E, they're not hard. Um, I, what if the question asked, uh, so this is a hypothetical. What if the question asked, does there exist a direction u such that uh, the directional derivative in that direction is, let's say, uh, 10. Okay. So is there, when I do df dot u and at 1 comma negative 1, of course. So if I do df dot u, uh, del f dot u, evaluate at 1 comma negative 1, right? And I want to see, is there a direction u such that um, does this exist? Or can 10 be reached at all? And what do I get? Well, realize that, okay, well, del f dotted with del f over the magnitude of del f, right? This is the direction of the greatest increase, right? This is the largest my directional derivative can be when u is equal to uh, del f over the magnitude of del f, right? And that was part A, right? It's the largest when u is equal in, in the direction of del f over magnitude del f. And what is this? Do you guys recognize what this is? This is equal to del f dot del f over the magnitude of del f and there was a there's a dot product property that tells us what del f dot del f is a vector dotted with itself is its magnitude squared remember that and wow look at that the greatest directional derivative i can get for a function f at a point is the magnitude of the gradient so at 1 comma negative 1, right, remember del f at 1 comma negative 1, uh, the max directional derivative is equal to uh, the, the magnitude of this guy, and this guy was uh, 3 comma negative 4, right? So the, so the max directional derivative of the del f at 1 negative 1 in any direction I choose is going to be 5. Right, it's going to be the magnitude of the gradient at that point. And so, no, there is no direction u that exists that I can get 10. All right, so no, u does not exist. Max directional derivative of f at 1, negative 1 is 5. Okay? And likewise, the minimum directional derivative at this point is going to be negative 5, because remember what happens uh, when we have the minimum directional derivative. Well, u is then equal to negative del f over f, and that means we just need to have negative signs here, right? So this would be del f dot, it would be negative f del. So this would be a dot negative, and there would be a negative sign, there would be a negative sign, there would be a negative sign, right? So so that's how you do it. Um, that's how you, that's the theory. The theory usually asks you which direction do you have to go to find the, the, the maximum possible uh, gradient, right? Or, or which direction do you choose u to be such that you get the largest increase and which direction you have to be um, that gets you the smallest or the greatest rate of decrease. And that's all really directional derivatives are. Um, we, uh, we use the gradient in the next section for uh, more applications. But in this section, it's really a focus on these directional derivatives. Um, so one good problem I encourage you guys to look at is uh, number 34, uh, 14, 534. I, I have that problem worked out in my notes. And I guess number 30 as well. 
uh, that, that that's a very similar problem to number 29. And it's, 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 it's really important to know the theory in this section, which is why I talked a little bit about it. Uh, in class, I think I'm going to demonstrate um, what the directional derivative actually looks like. It involves dealing with the level curves that I talked about briefly in 14.1. And um, yeah, uh, I, guess, I guess that's really it for this video from 14.5. So the next section, we're going to move on to 14.6. Lots of applications there, and I'll see you guys in that video.